What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with a new tutorial for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of messages like this in older applications where the CD-ROM was required to run. There are a lot of older games like this. In this case, there's a game I have, Painkiller Black Edition, uh, which I picked up on Steam however long ago, but just got to digging into the files and saw that there is an editor that was not patched for the Steam release, so this effectively won't run unless you either happen to have a CD or go out there and find a no CD patch. Um, and we're just going to do that ourselves instead of relying on something else uh, from someone else. So, yeah, the first thing that you want to do is determine if your application is 32-bit or 64-bit. A quick way to do that is to right-click on it and go to Properties click the compatibility tab, check this box under compatibility mode, and if you see Windows 95 from the drop down then it's a 32-bit application, otherwise it's a 64-bit application. Cool little rule of thumb there. So now what we're going to do is start up X32 debug since we know it's a 32-bit application. All right, And now I'm going to click and drag the application into there Okay, and see how it says the module we're in is input host. I'm going to click the run button here until I get to paineditor.exe, which here we are. So once you're in the module that you want to be in, now you can right click like anywhere in here and search for and then current module and then click string references and this is going to look for our string which is this All right, so we want to filter for that message please insert and here we go I'm going to close that now we can double click where this is referenced at All right, and now we're inside of this function or subroutine and if we take a little look around we can see that in terms of what does this function do, it looks like uh, a pretty short function. Here's the prologue here. Jump straight into locale and we can see that I guess depending on your language it will return the please insert CD message accordingly. So we could either futz around in here and try to you know find the proper thing to nop or modify or what we can do is go to the prologue of this function and try to find the, uh, the caller or any callers to this function. So cross-references is what we're interested in. So we'll go to this first instruction in the prologue here and we'll go to xrefs. All right, so that's right-click and xrefs or you can just hit x on your keyboard to bring up cross-references. There may be more than one here, but it went ahead and took us to the one that it sees. So you could either double click or we're already here. So we see here this call, right? There is a jump if not equal instruction here before it that jumps over this call, which is presumably what we want to do to skip the call. So we could either knop all these bytes from these two instructions which would kind of effectively do the same thing because execution would come through here if this jump didn't happen then it would just come into a bunch of knobs and not do anything and then end up here or we can just modify this jump instruction here to always jump and see what happens then I think that's what we're gonna do so first thing that we'll do is uh, we'll copy this application Control C, Control V, and with this copy, we'll open HXD hex editor. It's a free hex editor. I'm going to click and drag that into there, and now you can hit Control G to go to, and we're going to go to offset 36C1. All right, 36C1. All right, and it takes us there, right here. Now, before I continue, some of you may be wondering why did I not go to 4036C1? And the reason for that is 32 bit applications have a default base address of 
zero 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 zero. All right, so that's like the start of the application. So anything off of that, an offset, will take us to, you know, whatever instructions happens to be at the memory address at that offset. So each of these, these are offsets. Okay. So in total, we have a memory address of 403C61, which can also be thought of the address 400000 plus offset 36C1. All right, so that's why I went to that offset. I've brought up a couple of things here that I will paste in the description of this video so that you can read about default base addresses for 32-bit and 64-bit applications, as well as DLLs. Uh, there's a really handy article here on Microsoft that spells it out very clearly <laughs> and something else you might be interested in reading into is uh, ASLR address space layout randomization it's a big topic but anyway I'll have those uh, links in the description of the video alright so back to it um, 36C1 was this byte here. We're going to change that 75 to EB because EB is the byte representation of the JMP instruction in this case here. All right. So now that we've done that, we can save this and uh, HXD will create a backup copy for you. Since we have the main executable open in x32 debug here. If we had tried to modify this in HXT, it would have said you can't because the application is open and something else. So that's why I just went ahead and created a quick copy. So I'm going to delete the copy it made of our copy because we don't need it. Um, and now what we can do is if we try running the original executable, we see the error. Now if we run our patched version, let's see what happens. All right, it goes through, and we can go File, Load Level, and it looks like everything is working just fine, um, or not, not responding. Maybe, oh, there we go. I guess it was just loading however, right? So, yeah, we can cruise around in the editor, and there it is. All right, so one last thing to note is, you know, we might be inclined to call this something like pain editor patched, but watch the little skull icon here. All right, you see the little shield there? All right, it says, you know, do you want to make changes, whatever. Um, UAC recognizes the word patch. Um, in the names of applications, right? So if I have patch, you see the shield is still there. But if I take out like that H, there we go. Now we could just double click and it would run just fine. All right, so there are certain keywords that you might need to avoid renaming to. <laughs> um, but we could just say pain editor, no CD, and that works just fine. All right, so there's our patched version, there's the normal version, and we are good to go. All right, this says it can't find the file because we went ahead and renamed it. Not a big deal. Close that. Close this. All right, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, go ahead and check out those links. If you don't know much about that the topic of, like, default base addresses, you'll learn a lot. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.